Now that I've been doing this for about four years, I wanna share with you guys what I think is the perfect starter package to web design. We're gonna be talking about how you guys can get started at first, and then we're gonna talk about how you guys can get clients moving forward. And this is a lot of stuff that I wish someone had told me when I was getting started, so I hope this video helps you guys out. Let's get right into it. Hey friends, my name's Levi Hagen, and I've been doing freelance web design for about four years now, dealing mostly in WordPress and Shopify. Now, I work from home, and I've also got this really cool studio that I get to work in as well, so I had some friends recently ask me, what do you do, bro? You make a lot of money. How much, how much money you make? How I got started making a great income all from the comfort of my own apartment and how I got started with web design. I thought I would make this video to show you all how you can get started doing the exact same thing that I'm doing. So today we're gonna be talking about how I became a full-time web designer and show you guys a clear roadmap on how you can become one too. Now I've been making videos for web design on YouTube for about two years now, but before that I was just your everyday run of the mill freelance web designer building websites for anyone who would ask. So four years ago, I was 18 years old Old and I just graduated high school. And I was working at a hotel in downtown Austin, not making that much money, by the way. I've always wanted to be in tech, and right now I'm going for a bachelor's in computer information systems, but I wanted to start making money online somehow. So I started poking around on the internet. And luckily, I also had a couple friends who already worked in tech, and one of them gave me a really good idea of becoming a freelance web designer. And I thought about it, and I thought, mm, that's pretty good. It's something that I could do on the side from home and make some money without having to do too much work. So I was open to the idea. So I started hopping on YouTube, and learning how to build websites. And I also asked a couple friends who were already in tech and eventually I knew what I was doing. So I started actually building websites for people. Once I got good enough and felt pretty confident in my ability, I started charging unbelievably cheap prices for my work. But honestly, I was just happy to be making some extra money on the side and getting experience. Essentially, I was a broke college student. So this was a big deal for me. When I ran out of friends and family though, I started talking to anyone I knew who owned a local business in Austin or who was trying to start something up. And then when I hit a dead end there, I started working with services like Upwork and Fiverr and just any freelance platform I could start on. Honestly, I was just trying to get my name out there and work for anyone that I could. Eventually it got to the point where I was able to quit my job because I was actually making more money as a freelance web designer than I was at my actual nine to five. <laughs> yeah, boy. And this is where I transitioned from freelance to full-time. Now I'm not gonna lie to you guys. It took maybe a year or two of building all of these different websites to finally actually start making a decent amount of money with this job, but it's definitely possible. And after that, I met my friends here at the channel and I met Dale and started working together on this YouTube channel. And that's pretty much how it all started. That's how I went from working a job straight out of high school for hardly any money at all to a full-time web designer and a YouTuber who works from home and gets paid pretty well. I feel pretty blessed to say the least. And because of that, I wanna share with you guys how you can get started doing the exact same thing. Now there's four things that you need to get started when you're building websites for people. And there can be other things depending on what you wanna do, but for the most part, for most people, this is what you'll need to get started. So you're gonna need your own personal website, which I think is fairly obvious because you're telling people that you're competent enough to build theirs, so you should have one for yourself. So after you build that personal website for yourself, you should get a professional email as well. And then you'll need some social media, and as well as that, you're gonna need offline practice capabilities. So let's start from the top. If you don't already know how to build a website yet, don't worry. I mean, do you see what the name of the channel is. Here at Create a Pro Website, we teach you guys how to build websites from start to finish completely for free. I mean, me teaching you is free. Obviously, building a website isn't free because you have to pay for a domain name and web hosting to actually get your website online. Yes, I know that you can get a free domain name and free hosting, but I strongly recommend against it. I don't want to get into it right now, but I strongly recommend that you pay for the domain name and hosting, especially if you're going to be doing this as a freelance web designer for other people. Anyways, the point is I'm going to be talking to you guys today about how to get started as a web designer. So I'm not going to sit here and give you an hour long tutorial on how to build a website. I've got countless videos where I teach you guys in depth how to build websites. So you guys can go and check those out. But just for a demonstration here, I'm gonna show you guys a quick overview of getting one set up so that you guys can at least know what to expect. Again, you can watch one of my tutorials if you want the in-depth tutorial. Basically, you're gonna purchase your own domain name and web hosting because you need that to build any website. A domain name is just the address to your website. It's what people were gonna enter into the search bar to find your site. So something like yourwebsite.com and web hosting is just renting space on a server that's connected to the internet. These are the two minimum requirements for building a website. So you're gonna have to purchase it every time you build a site for a client. And by the way, I've got the best deal that you can find on the internet right now. It's the first link in the description, createaprowebsite.com slash hostinger. You're gonna get 78% off your first year of hosting and a free domain name included with the premium plan. Basically right off the bat, instead of spending like $130, you're only gonna be spending about $40 tops. So this is a huge discount and it's 
it's also a huge selling point. If you're a freelance web designer who can offer almost $100 off their first purchase, it's gonna be a huge win. Anyways, after I purchase my domain name and hosting, I can move on to install WordPress. And then after installing WordPress with one click, I can download a plugin called Starter Templates so that I can download a complete website template that I can customize on my own. I'm gonna see if they have one for a freelance web designer template. Ha, <laughs> cool, they do. From here, I'm gonna download this template and use it. And once I have it downloaded, I can customize using Elementor the entire website, however I want. Watch this. I'm so good at web design, I'm gonna build a website that's entirely done in just five seconds. Ready? Five, four, three, two, one, boom. Here's the website. Really quickly, I wanna mention the structure of this website that I built. I think it's important for a portfolio. At the top, I've got my name, title, and short description in the hero section. And that's basically the first section of the website. And this is so that people immediately know who I am and what I do. And then after that, I have an about me snippet to tell them a little bit about myself and my work experience and things like that. And then I segue into the services section, which is where I can tell them the different things that I can provide for them. After that is where I put my portfolio, where I can show off all of my work or completed projects, whatever you want. And it's okay to have a few fake websites up here just to show off the style of web design that you do. It's completely okay. Now, after I have my portfolio right below that, I'm gonna hit them with some social proof, usually testimonials, and then finally a contact form so that they can actually request services from you. Now this structure is important because it answers all of the questions that your client might ask before they decide to work with you. And at the very bottom of your site, they can work with you. So from top to bottom, they know who you are, and what you do. And then also they know why you do it. And then they know how you do it. They see examples of what you've done in the past and then they see other people saying that they like what you've done. And then at the very bottom, they can get in contact with you. So that's sort of the storyline that we want for the website. And if you wanna watch a full tutorial on how to build a personal portfolio website from start to finish without any steps being skipped, you can click on the link in the top right corner, which will also be in the description. Now that you guys have a website up and running, we can focus on your professional email. Now, I recommend your social media username your email, and your domain name for the website all match each other. It's a really big deal. So if my website domain is levihagen.com, I want my email to be example at levihagen.com and my social media might be Levi Hagen, something like that. So next, what we're gonna do is set up the personal email, which we're gonna be doing inside of your hosting or account through your website domain. Now, if you didn't use my link and your website is hosted with a different provider, you might not be able to follow along here for this part, but the idea is the same. No matter who your hosting provider is, you can usually still set up a professional email account depending on what package you paid for. But thankfully ours is included for free in the hosting or premium package. So if you did use my link, let's go to our hosting or account that we just created. From here, you can go up to the top ribbon and click on the emails tab. Now under the emails tab, you can see all of the domains that you have under your account. And if you have multiple, you'll see a bunch, but if this is your first website, you're only gonna see one. You're gonna wanna select the domain name that you just created. And then after that, you'll notice that the first box in the top left corner is to create a new email account. So we're gonna click on add email email account. And you'll notice that I can create whatever email I want with the domain of my website. Once you're finished choosing your professional email username and password, you're done. That's it. You can see all of your available email addresses down below under the domain name that you just selected. And a couple examples of this and more popular options would be your name at yourdomain.com or inquiries at yourdomain.com or support at yourdomain.com, things like that. After your email is done, it's time to create a couple social media accounts so that people can find you on all of their favorite platforms. And this is just getting your name out there and getting your face out there. So you might wanna create a TikTok or Instagram or Facebook account and throw up a couple pictures of previous websites websites you've built, or maybe a couple pictures of yourself working, whatever you want to do. Now, once you create those business social media accounts, you can take those links and you can hook them up to your website so that when people are on your site, they can go over to your social media accounts and vice versa. If they're on the social media accounts, they can bounce over to your website. So you're gonna to wanna to have your website link in the bio of your social media accounts. The last thing you're gonna to need to get started is some sort of offline software for practicing building websites. And I recommend a software that's called Local WP, which is essentially a website management system where you can build multiple offline fake websites using WordPress to get better at web design. And I'll make sure I leave a link to Local WP down in the description below. Now, I recommend practicing building websites offline to build your skill set, as well as downloading templates and tearing those apart to see how they're built. This way you can see best practices and get better at replicating successful websites. I don't think I need to tell you how important practice is if you want to get good at anything. So I recommend downloading Local WP because it's free and incredibly helpful for practice. All right, guys, now you've got your website up and running. You've got a professional email as well as social media accounts 
and you've been practicing building websites offline. Now you're ready for battle and it's time to start getting clients. So how do we find clients? Well, if you're brand new to web design, you might wanna start by doing a couple websites for free or for an unbelievably cheap price. And you might want to do it for people who are friends and family at first. And this is how I started out. It's low pressure, it's low risk because you know who you're building the website for and you're not charging much at all, if anything. This way you're getting outside opinions on your work as well as experience in communicating with someone else and taking their ideas and inserting them into the design of your website. Now, obviously I don't want you to work for free or super cheap for very long. So once you feel comfortable enough in your capabilities, you can start charging more money per project. Now, if you're gonna build a website for someone, a one to three page website, for example, I would recommend charging anywhere from 100 to $300 if you're just starting out. That's just a recommendation for you. Of course, you can charge however much you want. That's the beauty of being a freelancer. This is just my recommendation at the beginning. A quick tip on pricing though. If you're ever overbooked with work, it's usually a good sign to raise your prices. If every client you talk to says yes instantly to your prices, you may have set them a little too low. Remember that hearing a no every once in a while from clients because your prices are too high probably means that your pricing is set at a competitive and good rate, so that's totally fine. If all you're getting are no's, well then maybe your pricing is a bit too high and clients are not reaching out. So after you're done building a couple websites for friends and family and acquaintances or anyone else, you'll easily be able to do my next technique for getting clients, which would be word of mouth. Every time I build a website for someone as a freelancer, I always tell them to mention my name if they have anyone they know who's looking for a website, and this usually works pretty well, you'd be surprised. Do the same with your friends and family right after you built those cheap or free websites for them. Ask them if they know anyone who might need a website built. But it doesn't just stop there. You can proactively ask around and find out if anyone needs a website that you might know. You can also check out small local businesses in your area and take a look at their website online. If they have a website and it's old, you can offer to update it for them and make it look a little bit better. And if they don't even have a website at all, then you can offer to actually build the website for them. And so these are just three ways of using word of mouth to get clients after you've already had a couple projects under your belt. You can proactively ask around, check with local businesses, or refer previous clients to tell other people about you. And if you wanna expand your reach even more, you can sign up for different freelance platforms like Upwork or Fiverr. And if you haven't already seen one of those websites, it's essentially the equivalent of eBay for freelancers. You go to the website, as a client of course, and you can enter in whatever service you might need into the search bar, and then you get to check out a ton of different freelancers for that job. Now, you can sign up for these platforms as a freelance web designer, and you can work your way up the ladder, starting off with cheap prices, and then you can increase your prices as you go, yeah. Yada, yada, yada. You guys get it. Just to give you guys an example, I can go to Fiverr or Upwork right now and search WordPress website. And you'll notice that all of these freelancers pop up down below. Now people can shop by price and star ratings and anything else that they want. And they can also see examples of the work that you do. And this is pretty much how it works. You're gonna be one of these sellers offering your services. And I did this for two years before I started on YouTube. So it definitely works, it's just very competitive. Now the last way that you can get clients is through paid ads. And whether that be social media ads like paid Instagram ads or Facebook ads that drive traffic to your Instagram account, or you can run Facebook ads that add traffic to your website. Either way, if you're willing to spend a little bit of money that you just made from your last project on advertising, then this is a wonderful way of being able to get more eyes onto your website. Now that you fully understand the process of quitting your nine to five to go as a full-time web designer, you may still be confused on actually how to land your first paying client. Well, if that's the case, you're gonna wanna check out this video right here, where I show you guys exactly how to make your first $1,000 with web design. I walk you through practical applications of how to get started with your first project from start to finish, from pricing it all the way to delivering it to the client. I'll see you guys there.